Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and this is the second video of the series where I teach you guys Node.js and Express from the beginning. So in the last video, I taught you guys how to set up a Node.js application and we started using routes. So basically we, we set that whenever you go to the route slash YouTube, you get a, a message saying res.send hello YouTube. And this is very simple. This is like a very simple way of testing if your server is running. However, in this video, I'm gonna focus on trying to render HTML or try to render a front end using our server. So basically there's various different ways of hosting your website. And one of them is for example, rendering uh, your client side on, on its own by using like a framework, for example, React. And the other way is by doing it directly from the server. In our, in this case, and especially when you're trying to learn Node.js, I would recommend rendering everything from the server and using an, uh, an HTML template, which is what we're going to be using. And it is a, it is very useful in when you're starting to learn. So in our case, let's just start by running the application. Uh, we installed Nodemon, so in order to run, we write npm run dev start. And if you don't know what this means, I would recommend checking my last video. But let me see. Okay, let's run this. And on port 3005, we see that we cannot get slash. But if we go to slash YouTube, as we stated in our in our program, you can see that it says hello YouTube. So let's let's go back to the initial route. And let's kind of change this. So basically, we want to install two things. One of them is a module, uh, a module called uh, path and the other one is called EJS and I'm going to explain what each one of them do so npm install path and EJS you can just write both of them right next to each other and press enter because it's gonna work basically path is just a if I, I believe it is a built-in uh, package that you can use to direct stuff and manage uh, different folders in your application and we're gonna use that to set uh, our, where our front end is going to be placed. And EJS is a template for HTML. It's literally almost the same as HTML. However, you can implement uh, variables that you set from the backend. So that's kind of the difference. So when you're trying to render stuff from the server, you're not gonna be using HTML. You're gonna be using either EJS or Pug. There's different versions. I just think that EJS is the best one because it's a lot more similar to normal HTML. So we just installed everything. If we go to our package.json, you can see here, we have our AJS, our Express, our Nodemon, and our path. So what we need to do now is we need to call both of those packages. So actually, let's just call path. So const path equals to require and path. This is how you import a, 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 a package in Node. And now we need to create a folder where we're gonna store all of our front end. So in most cases, you call this folder views and you can just call it whatever you want, but normally just call it views because it's kind of the, the standard. And inside of here, we're gonna we're gonna put all of our front end, all, all of our kind of HTML. In our case, it's gonna be EJS. So in order to create an EJS file, you can write the name of the file. So we're gonna create our main file, call it index. And instead of writing H, .html, we can write .ejs. And you can see like, it's literally the same thing as HTML. So I'm gonna create like a basic HTML file right here with a body and I'm gonna write, hello guys. I'm gonna save it. It's literally just HTML with some differences that I'm gonna explain later in this video. So basically all of our front end files are gonna be inside of views folder. So we gotta write a piece of code that will basically say to our program to that, uh, that all of our front end, what we wanna render is inside of that folder. So in order to do that, you can come here and write app.set and we can grab the name of the folder, so views. And we now can use the, the, the package path that we installed in order to set our folder views. So path.join and slash less uh, dear name and views. So basically, you, you, I don't think you need to know exactly what this means. This is standard if you're trying to implement a template engine. So just know that this is what you gotta do. This is basically setting all of our front end to be rendered in a folder called views. And, and now we've gotta tell our program what will our uh, template engine be. In our case, we're gonna use EJS, so app.set view engine, engine, and 
EJS. So now it's recognizing that all of our front end will be hosted, will be running through an EJS template. So we can save this and you can see that nothing is happening. So if we come here, it's still the same. The reason is because we're not rendering our index.ejs. If we come here to our app.get, let's remove this slash YouTube and like just create an, an app.get for whenever we try to reach the initial routes. And instead of sending, for example, the, the message hello YouTube that it's currently sending now, we can write res.render and the name of our file so it, it, it automatically knows that it's going to be inside of the views file the views folder so you just need to write the first part of the name of the file so in this case index and it will know that this is what you're trying to render if we try to if we save this and our, we come here and refresh it you can see that our html page is rendered in our by our server and if you doubt it you can just like come here create buttons which are like stuff that you couldn't create directly from the server. So let me create a button called uh, click me, whatever. Uh, let me create like a, an input of type text. Like you can, it, it's literally just like HTML. This is what I'm trying to emphasize. So if you see, and we refresh here, everything that we created in our EJS file already is rendered by our server. So the next thing I wanna do, and it's the last thing I'm gonna do in this video, is showing you guys why we're using EJS. So in normal HTML, you can pro you can insert JavaScript variables in some way or another, but if you're trying to render variables that are from the backend, then by using EJS, we can simply insert them by using the following syntax. For example, if I wanna, if I wanna send, change the name of this button, I wanna create a button that the variable for the name, like the name of the button, whatever is, is, is written in the button is defined by the backend. I can come to my backend and I'll create a variable here called var, or like, let me create const, const button name, um, button name equal to, hey, what's up? Something like that. Okay, so basically I created a variable in the backend. And if I wanna pass this variable to the front end, I can come to the place where we render our, our HTML, or, or in this case, our EJS, and I can pass an object. Why is it an object? Because we can pass multiple variables. So if I wanna pass a variable that is the button name, uh, for example, I give it a name of button name. This is the name of the variable we're gonna try to reach in the front end, and we can pass whatever value we want. So we're gonna pass the variable that we created over here, which is also called button name. So if we come here and we use the EJS syntax, which is basically a slash, no, not a slash, like a, a, a less than sign. And you can see that it's already auto completing. Basically it's this syntax right here. And in our case, since we're just trying to set one variable, you can put a, a hyphen, which basically defines that this is just gonna be one variable. And we call the button name button name and we save this you can see that in our front end now our button has the name with the variable that we created in our back end and this is like in my opinion it's it was really interesting when I first saw this and you can see that like it completely works you're sending information and this is how you're gonna send information that you're gonna fetch from a database for example or stuff that you're, you're completely dealing with in the back end and this is how you're gonna render it in the front end. So for example, if I wanted to send more variables, if I wanted to send also um, a title, I'm gonna create a variable called title and I'm gonna send a string which says, this is a title, right? And I wanna save this, I can come here and I can, for example, create an H1 and do the same thing. So uh, the same syntax and inside of here just write title and when we save this wait when we save this and we refresh you can see that our title appears so this is basically it for this video this was a simple video It's my second video of the series but i think it's really important to set up the basics first this is how we're going to connect our back end to our front end and i remember being really confused at first so if you're confused please leave a comment down below i'm open to answering any question so i hope you guys learned from this video and enjoyed this video if you like this series please leave a like so i can continue it and i see you guys next time Thank you.